All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be a review of this knife, and this is the Dark Bolt Designs Stratus. And this knife was sent to me by Lou of Dark Bolt Designs after I got to check uh, some of their knives out at Blade Show. And I was walking around Blade Show and saw their booth and honestly hadn't been aware of the brand before. And if you watch my videos, you know I love getting to check out new brands or brands that I hadn't been aware of. And particularly when, uh, when I walked by, I thought that their designs were really interesting. And then also this lock. I first at, at first thought that it was a button lock. You know, there's a lot of button locks out there right now. But then I realized after looking at it that this is actually a proprietary lock for Dark Bolt Designs. They call it their bolt lock. And what it is, is it's actually a liner lock that has a bolt connected to it through the scales. And so that really, really intrigued me because there's a knife that has a similar, not the same, but a similar locking system that I've always really liked that is not very popular, I don't think. And it is the Kershaw Thistle. So this knife has a kind of a similar idea. It's not the same where it's a bolt that goes through and you can't use the liner lock. That's a really key point here that I want to emphasize because you can also use the liner lock, liner lock on the bolt lock. But on the thistle, you press this button and you can close the knife without having your hand in the way of the blade. I appreciate that. It makes it a little safer. And I think that a liner lock is a really classic, simple, secure way of locking a knife. So I like uh, that this allowed me to close the knife without having my hand in the way. But as you can see, if you don't take your thumb off of the, the button here, you can't close the knife the whole way. You have to take your, your thumb off. Now this bolt lock from Dark Bolt Designs is a really cool upgrade to the same idea. So this is a functional liner lock. You can access it, you can use the liner lock as normal. So you can see you can unlock it and it works perfectly normally like a liner lock. But then you can also use it pretty much exactly like a button lock. So whereas on the thistle, which again, I like it, you know, for what it is, whereas on the thistle, you have to let go of this, you can hold this button and let it drop closed. So it's really cool because you get that classic, simple reliability of a liner lock and you can use it like a liner lock, but you also get that kind of fidget factor and safety with not having your thumb in the way of the blade of a button lock. So I really like this bolt lock that Dark Bolt Designs has as their proprietary locking system. I think that it's really nice having both those options and it's, and it's really unusual also having kind of two different unlocking methods. I don't really know of any other knife that has multiple unlocking methods. So you can see again that when I press the liner lock down, it also presses the button down and then you can close it normally or hold the button and let it swing closed. So I really, really like that lock. The lock locks up perfectly, um, no issue there. And I'll talk about you know, kind of the, the manufacturing of the knife in a little bit, but I just wanted to really emphasize, really spotlight this bolt lock. I think that it's really, really cool. And uh, I'm happy to see someone basically taking that idea that I really liked on the thistle and improving upon it. Uh, so I really do like this bolt lock a lot um, and in my unboxing of this knife which uh, I do have an unboxing and you can uh, check that out if you want to see you know the, the packaging and all that um, some people also express that they they like this idea so I think it's something that people are you know gonna enjoy when they see that it's something that exists now the other thing that kind of goes along with that about this knife is that this knife has a lot of opening methods so as you've seen me using, it has a flipper and it's a classic, you know, back flipper. Uh, so, you know, just a normal classic flipper and it works really well. Um, it is pretty short. I think it could probably be a little longer and you could use it a little bit more like a light switch. As it is, it's pretty much a push button style flipper. Um, but I think if they made it just a little longer or maybe even put a little bit of the jimping that you can see around here on that flipper tab, it might, you know, be a little bit easier to use it as a, a light switch. But as you can see, I have no issue opening it with the back flipper. But then you also have 
the thumb stud. And by the way, the hardware here is titanium, the thumb stud, this button, and the clip. Uh, so you can open it with a thumb stud, works great. Again, using either closing method, um, the thumb stud is very, very simple. I like the simplicity of this thumb stud. It basically has no frills, and I like that a lot. It goes with the look of the button itself. Then you also can back or reverse flick it with the thumb stud because it is a, a dual-sided thumb stud. So always nice to have the middle finger flick. So that's three. And then you have a front flipper. I'm gonna show the front flipper last though. Uh, so then you can also press the button and flip it out like a button lock, like you can with a button lock. Um, so if you wanna just nice and simply press that button down, that basically takes the detent off. It pulls the detent off of the blade and you can swing it out. You don't have to do it quite as hard as I was there. Now, like I said, this also has a fifth opening method. Yes, that is five opening methods. <laughs> it has a front flipper. Now, this front flipper is a little bit rough on my thumb. Um, so this jimping is very, very, very aggressive. Uh, hopefully you can see just how kind of pointy that, that jimping is. And it's also not a very high front flipper. Uh, so for me, it really bites into my thumb and I have difficulty using it. Um, I do like this style of front flipper where it's you know just kind of a right angle, but for me, I, I wish this was a little taller. I'm gonna show you an example here, and this is actually the knife that converted me to front flippers and a little bit of uh, foreshadowing for the manufacturing of this knife. But this is the Civivi Sakoke. This is a Ray Conico design. You can see that that front flipper is a similar style, much less, you know, aggressive jimping but because it's taller i have no trouble you know using that front flipper and like i say this is the, the knife that converted me to enjoying front flippers so i think that this could be a little taller and i actually you know i'm not a knife designer but i don't think it, it would necessarily uh, interfere with the construction of the knife now one thing that it might do is when you uh, flip the knife if your thumb finger not thumb index finger doesn't get out of the way it can get hit by this front flipper. So especially if it was longer, you just have to make sure that your finger gets out of the way if you're using the back flipper. But I think if they're gonna have the front flipper, it would work a little better for me if it was a little taller. And I think that it could use a little bit less um, aggressive jimping. But it's really cool to have five opening methods. I mean, you know, knives like, again, the Sokoke, you have two opening methods. And I always say in my videos, I like having multiple opening methods and two is good five is better <laughs> um so i do appreciate having all of those different opening methods um another really cool thing about the design of this knife is that this knife and the other model that dark bolt designs have which i believe is called the arcus um I will definitely link to both of the the models in the description and uh, hopefully i'm not getting that name wrong but both of these, these two models that they have, have interchangeable blades. Now, of course, they can't, you know, warranty that, that it's definitely going to work 100%, that there won't be detent or, or lockup issues, but design-wise, the blades are interchangeable. So that's really cool. You can really customize your knife in a way that uh, I don't know of any or certainly not many other production knives allowing you to do. You can take the blade from this knife and switch it to the other model and vice versa. So it's really cool and I do like the look of their other model. It has, rather than a clip point style blade, it has a kind of like a modified Warncliffe sheet foot style blade. Um, and then the other thing is that the pocket clips are also reversible or interchangeable. So really, really cool feature that, again, you just don't see on other knives. And I think it's it's, a really interesting idea. Um, I'd love to, you know, get the other model and do a video changing the blades and see how it works basically. So hopefully I'll get to do that at some point, but I really love that idea. Now, as for the, just kind of the practical design of the knife, it's actually a pretty classic knife. So you can see it has a little bit of like a boxy handle, but it fits really well in my hand actually. Um, so you can see that my index finger goes in this 
kind of scallop right here and I can get a full four finger grip. My pinky doesn't hang off that edge or right on that uh, point there. I can get a full four finger grip and it, it feels great in the hand. It's a kind of a classic blade shape, or I'm sorry, handle shape to be honest with the scallop and then the curve. Just, you know, it adds this little kind of hard corner here versus just a continuous curve. But it feels great in my hand and I do like these three lines that they have, which seems to be kind of a, you know, something that they have across both uh, models that, that they have so far. And then the blade shape is a pretty classic long clip point. So it has a nice long drawn swedge here. I love the look of that swedge. Uh, very nice and straight. And the long clip point that comes all, you know, almost all the way up to the thumb stud really looks good. And it isn't a full flat grind, which, you know, you see a lot of uh, full flat grinds um, these days, which is a great thing. But it's kind of interesting to see a knife that isn't a full flat grind. This seems to be a hollow grind and it's a saber ground hollow grind. Of course, most hollow grinds are not full hollow grinds, but this one is, uh, you know, leaves a good bit of blade that has the flat there. Now, it seems to be ground really nicely. This knife seems to, feels like it cuts really well for having not a full flat grind. It, it is a pretty hefty blade. You can see that the blade stock is, you know, pretty solid. Uh, I'll give you another comparison to the Sokoke. Pretty similar. Um, here is another kind of foreshadowing. Um, a little thinner than on the Laconico Keen, uh, but definitely a solid blade stock and uh, seems to have, you know, a good thickness towards the tip, but cuts well. I um, have done just normal, you know, EDC cutting with it, and I think it's going to work perfectly fine for all your cutting tasks because it has this classic clip point blade. Now, that gets me, you know, all that foreshadowing into the construction of this knife. This knife is really well made. Um, it has really nice construction. And if you know the term, read the knife, not the tang, which is actually a, a term from traditional knives. Um, it means basically look at the knife to see who made it, not what it says on the tang. And this doesn't say much on the tang, to be honest, it just has the Dark Bolt Designs logo. But this knife, if you look at it, looks like a Wien made knife. And that's what it is. It actually is made by Wien knives. I asked, uh, you know, Lou on if they could share who the OEM is. And he said, yes, it is made by Wien knives. So you know it's gonna be made really well. I mean, I think everybody in the knife industry, uh, everybody in the knife hobby knows that we knows how to make a knife really well. Um, it is really, really smooth. The detent is super crispy, super nice. Uh, it does have ceramic ball bearings, so it's very, very smooth. As you can see, it drops closed. Um, it has no blade play forward and back or side to side, even when unlocked. Um, there is a lot of, hopefully you can see it, a lot of milling on the inside there, which is nice, takes the weight down a little bit. Uh, just really well made and, you know, no surprise at all, um, being that it's made by Wee Knives. Now, speaking of that, it um, has premium materials also. You can see it's G10. It's a nice smooth G10, so it feels premium to me. I do like a smooth G10. Again, you know, another comparison to the Sokoke. And uh, 20 CV steel, so a really high-end steel. Um, you know, it's gonna work well for you just like other Wii knives. And like other Wii knives, it's priced really similarly. So despite it being you know, its own brand, its own, you know, it's not just a design for Wii, this is Dark Bolt Designs, its own brand. Uh, it's not much more expensive, if not a little less expensive than a lot of Wii knives under their own brand. So this knife is $219 on Dark Bolt Designs website. And I think being that it's made by Wii knives, it has that really high quality, it has high quality materials and these really, really interesting design features like the five, five opening methods, um, the two unlocking methods, the proprietary lock, the, the um, really, really cool interchangeable blade and pocket clip idea. I think it's just a really unique knife that 
if you're interested in that sort of thing, like um, having multiple opening methods, different locking styles, new locks, and also, you know, being able to tinker with your knives and interchange the blades, I think that it's a really great option. And honestly, I am hoping to uh, check out their other model at some point too, and see how that interchanging system works. Uh, so I have really enjoyed getting to check out this Dark Bolt Designs Stratus, and I really appreciate Lou of Dark Bolt Designs sending it along for review. I will have a link where you can get this knife in the description, so definitely check that out and let them know that Knife Thoughts sent you. If you enjoy this type of video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and select all so you know when I post new videos. Check out my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.